Hi, this is Alberto Savoy, and I'm here to give you a very quick demonstration of Craft4j. So what we're using here is the Craft4j Eclipse plugin. If you've installed successfully, you should see a very tasteful little toilet paper icon over there. And just as a quick reminder, Craft4j is used to look for certain patterns in uh, code that indicate code that is not very robust and not very uh, safe to, to change. And the pattern that it looks for in this version of Craft4j is code that is either overly complex or not well tested enough. So let's assume that I've generated a project called Crappy Bank. And before I start to work on it and, and enhance it, I want to see how crappy it is, if there are some things that I should do in order to make it a little bit more robust before I go and make changes to it. So I click at the project level. Make sure you don't click, click at the uh, package or the source level. You have to click at the top level project. And then I click on the Craft4j icon. So what Craft4j is doing right now, it's looking for any test if it exists. It runs a JUnit test and then gives you a report. And the report focuses on how many crappy methods you have. And a crappy method is defined as a method whose combination of code coverage and complexity is such that it's pretty risky. In other words, it's a complex method without sufficient test. So in this particular case, I have 5% of my methods are considered uh, crappy. And if I scroll down here to the histogram distribution, I see that you know most of my code is pretty nice and clean, but I have two particular crappy methods. To see what those methods are, I can click on the method detail. So I click here on crap. And I can see that uh, the first one of them is checking account. It has a complexity of seven, meaning there are seven branches or decision points in the code and 0% test. So this is not a very good idea. So the constructor from checking account is something that we should go and take a look at. So let's go and take a look at it. And as you can see in the, in the constructor, there's quite a bit of code and quite a bit of logic. There is a, a try catch block. Uh, there is an if statement that checks if the name is uh, is valid. There is another if statement to check if the balance is um, invalid. And these are statements of the form if A or B, which means you typically need the three or four test cases to make sure you cover all the possibilities. So there's quite a bit of logic in the code, and it's pretty worrisome that there are no tests for it. So the first pattern, and in fact, the best pattern you can use to reduce uh, the risk of your code and make it more robust is to write some tests. So I just happened to have some tests here pre-written. I didn't want you to, you know, to have uh, to have you look at me uh, write the code. So I'm just going to uncomment them. So now, when the tool actually uh, runs the test, I'm going to have um, some coverage. So let's go back to the project level icon and let's run Craft4j again. So for now, it's running the test. See the tests are running. What I've done is by writing some tests, I've reduced the percentage of crappy method from five something uh, to two something. So in theory, I could stop here because it's pretty acceptable to have you know a certain amount of uh, crappy methods uh, in your code. It's not ideal, but it's acceptable. But you know, I am Alberto. I'm uh, Mr. Craft4j along with Bob. So I, I want to have a, a crap-free project. So I can scroll down. Uh, notice that there is one more crappy project. Uh, crappy method in my code. I click in there and I see that savings account is again a method with some relatively high complexity and zero percentage test. So I, let's go and click on it. And again, we see that there is quite a bit of logic, you know, validating social security number, validated names, so very similar to checking uh, account. But here, instead of writing tests, I'm going to do something else that helps to reduce risk, and that is to do some refactoring. Ideally, you write tests before you do the refactoring, but here I just want to give you a quick demonstration. So imagine somebody that has never been exposed to this code, and they have to read through this method and trying to figure out what, it, um, what it's doing. And by the way, this is a simple example. I've seen much, much worse. So you look here and you see, uh, you know, if you read carefully, you spend a few minutes, you probably realize that there are three things that are done in this method. Uh, first, you validate the social security number, then you validate the name, and then you validate the balance before you set up all of these fields. So one very nice thing that you can do to the code is to factor out this method. You do a method extraction. So if this entire bunch of code has one purpose, and that is to validate the social security number, let's extract the method. So I click here on extract method. Let's make sure we give it a good name, validate social security number. You know, if I call this method foo or x, it's really not going to help. You know, I'm just, uh, but this way, it makes it much easier for people to read. So that's my first uh, refactoring. And now in this method, what I'm doing is checking if the name is valid. So let's apply the same trick. 
uh, refactor and extract method and we call this validate name not main all right and uh, so in theory i could do it with this other method but you know let's leave it uh, as is for the time being so what i've done is i've taken uh, maybe 20 lines of code that were pretty obscure and i've extracted methods that now have a pretty nice name so if i run craft for j again let me make sure i save the project i should be getting a cleaner uh, bill of health so it's running the test and there i go my code is crap free now remember crap free doesn't mean that it's going to work in all circumstances it just means that i've addressed some of the most uh, obvious uh, errors the code is more robust because now the complex methods are protected by tests or i've refactored the complex methods into methods that are easier to understand so this is pretty much it. Go to crap4j.org if you want more information, and I hope that this demonstration has been useful to you. This is Alberto saying goodbye, and I hope that you use Crap4j and keep your code clean. Thanks. Bye-bye.